Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here at Micro Center where we've got all the parts you need. Wow. It's been about four years since the last major introduction of boards from Raspberry Pi. But today, in the Maker Lab at Micro Center, we've got the all new Raspberry Pi 5, and we can't wait to tell you all about it. Let's dive right in. At first glance, the Raspberry Pi 5 might look a lot like its younger brother, the Raspberry Pi 4. However, a lot has been done to move around some of these connectors to add new ones and to increase performance overall. You'll notice that the USB and Ethernet ports have been moved back to their original orientation as they were on the 3B. This allowed for some modification overall to the real estate of the board and the addition of a few new connectors. As the processor keeps getting more and more powerful and the board doesn't get any bigger, heat dissipation is going to continue to be an important thing to look at. Raspberry Pi has taken this into account and will have new accessories such as the active cooler which utilizes this new connector up here for a dedicated fan PWM controller. With the active cooler, you'll have a metal heat sink and a blower fan, which mounts using these two new mounting holes and then connects into the PWM fan connector. This will be controlled via software in the operating system. Likewise, the new Raspberry Pi 5 case also features a built-in fan that will connect to this connector. The new Raspberry Pi 5 case has a lid that can come off allowing it to be very configurable and even stackable. In the upper right hand corner of the Raspberry Pi 5, you'll see the new RP1 chip from Raspberry Pi. This custom silicon acts as a Southbridge controller for all of the ins and outs. It even connects directly to the new BCM2712 Broadcom system on a chip. The RP1 allows the Broadcom chip to talk to all the GPIO, the USB, Ethernet, and more. Because of the RP1, the Raspberry Pi 5 has new, better power management. And with the new 27 watt USB-C power adapter from Raspberry Pi, more amperage can be delivered to the USB ports, allowing it to drive more power hungry accessories. To the left of the ethernet jack down here, you'll see two MIPI connectors. Traditionally, the display and camera connector were located one here and one here. However, with these new universal MIPI connectors, you can connect either two displays two cameras or one of each. Next to the MIPI connector are what Pi 4 introduced, which is the micro HDMI connectors. Still two of them, however, on the Raspberry Pi 5, they can output 4K 60 frames per second on both monitors. In between the two micro HDMI connectors, you'll see this small connector here, which is UART, which allows you to connect the Raspberry Pi debug probe. The debug probe is something that Raspberry Pi launched a little while ago, and what it does, it allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi without having to use an external mouse, keyboard, and monitor to debug it. Next to HDMI 0, you'll see this other small connector. This is for the real-time clock battery. With the addition of this connector and a battery, you now have RTC functions on the Raspberry Pi 5 which will include things like wake at a certain time. Next to the RTC connector down here is the USB-C port, which supports power delivery style USB adapters. The new USB-C 27 watt adapter from Raspberry Pi takes full advantage of this and even allows for additional amperage beyond the five volt three amps to go out to the USB ports through the RP1 silicon. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the feature that everyone's asked for for the longest amount of time, Right here on the board, we have an on and off switch. This on and off switch will work with the operating system to ensure a safe on and off power cycle, alleviating the potential for a corrupt operating system. And above the power button over here on the left side of the board is the PCI Express slot port. This supports second gen PCI Express. Now, at launch, there aren't going to be too many accessories for this, but we suspect that in the next couple of weeks to months, we'll see an M.2 hat, which allows for NVMe style storage. And we can't wait to see what other features and hats come out for this. There are a few items that we glossed over, but are worth note. So traditionally, the PoE hat connector pins were up around this area of the board. To allow for the RP1, they've been moved down here. So there will be a new PoE plus hat for the Raspberry Pi 5. Also, you may note an emission of the traditional analog audio and video out port. This emission allowed for the board components to be moved around and for newer technologies to be added, such as the PCI Express. Now, on to performance. 
Compared to the Raspberry Pi 4, the Raspberry Pi 5 can see a 2 to 3x performance increase utilizing the all new BCM2712. This is roughly, depending on how you calculate it, 130x performance increase over the original Raspberry Pi 1. We'll throw a full list of specs on the screen so you can get all the details you need. The micro SD card slot now supports an SDR104 mode, which is roughly 2x over the traditional SD card controller. The two USB 3.0 ports are capable of supporting simultaneous 5 gigabits per second operation. And with all of these improvements combined, they really work together to create a powerful user experience which isn't throttled by antiquated limitations. There have been several user interface improvements to the operating system as well. Things like power management and network connections have been improved and are much easier for the end user to understand. For best power performance, we're gonna suggest that you purchase the new 27 watt USB-C power supply from Raspberry Pi. This will ensure that you're getting enough amperage to all your external devices, as well as to the power hungry processor on the board. At launch, the Raspberry Pi will come in two RAM variants using LP DDR4 SD RAM. It will come in a four gigabyte model and an eight gigabyte of RAM model. One and two gigabyte models may follow on shortly, but only time will tell. Ultimately, with all the new connectors and the boost in performance, there are many questions around what the Raspberry Pi 5 will be used for. What sort of new projects will people come up with? Here at Micro Center, we're very excited to see what you, the maker, come up with and what sort of new products are developed around the Raspberry Pi 5. We're really excited to get these into your hands and the board should be available in our stores sometime around October 23rd. So make sure to check your local Micro Center store's website for stock and availability. And we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.